Let's differentiate 30 functions together. Grab your log tables, turn it to page 25, grab a pen, grab some paper and pause, rewind and work through all of these questions with me. The first six questions here are suitable for Leaving Cert ordinary level students. Everything after that is Leaving Cert higher level only. The first thing I want to draw your attention to here is on question four, where we have one over X. I'm going to use my rules of indices to bring that X up to the top of the line and it turns into an X to the power of minus one. Likewise, with question five, I've got the square root of X. I don't differentiate thirds I differentiate with powers so I'm going to rewrite that as x to the power of a half and then use my normal straightforward differentiation rule in question six there you see we have a fraction as a power don't let those fractions put you off you follow the rule of differentiation to the last so from now on these are all leaving sort of higher level student questions so in question seven there we are dealing with the product rule product means to multiply you can see there at the the top we have an x and an x plus one multiplying by each other so we use the product rule we have a u and a v and we differentiate u we differentiate v and we use that rule on page 25 in our log tables to pull them all together and simplify down to get our dy dx likewise in question eight and question nine we will see that we have a dividing situation which we use the quotient rule for again on page 25 of log tables identify your u and your v differentiate u differentiate v and pull all that together using the rule in that log tables tidy it up the best you can and you get your dy dx you can see i'm doing another example here on question nine Pretty much everything you need is on page 25 of your log tables and make sure you have it open in front of you and you're always referring back to it. Make sure as well that you're watching and looking and observing what's in front of you every single time you're presented with a function. It's really important that you know what the first step is and once we get that sorted, we're good to go. Question 10 requires us to use our indices rules again. So I don't want that square root there. So I rewrite it as x to the power of minus 3 bracket to the power of a half and I use my rules of indices to simplify that out and then I just differentiate it using the straightforward rule of differentiation. In question 11 and 12 you will find that we are using the product rule again. The brackets tell us that we are multiplying but if there's no brackets in another situation you do need to observe that if two things are sitting beside each other they are multiplying. So again, we label our U, we label our V, we differentiate the U, we differentiate the V and we apply the rule and we multiply all the bits and pieces together like we are told to do in our log tables. You simplify it down the best you can. You are required to have it in as lowest form as possible. So make sure you make an effort to do that. The whole numbers aren't too bad, as you can see here in question 11. Just a bit of patience really gets you through it. However, in question 12, when we are dealing with powers that are fractions, it can be a little bit more difficult and there's so much more opportunities for slips and errors to occur. What I do recommend is just to have your calculator to hand just to double check because a lot of students make the error that when you have x to the power of a half and you differentiate you end up with half x to the power of minus a half and a lot of students make that error with the with the power so again if you're not super confident you know if you're not familiar what five over two is what seven over two is what three over two is if those kind of numbers give you a little bit of anxiety or or there's something you're not super confident with have the calculator to hand so that can help you out Remember when we are adding and subtracting and multiplying x's with powers we are using our rules of indices as well which is only a few pages back in your log table so make sure you reference that and you have it to hand. You're doing really well. You're working through these great. So keep going. You're doing a fantastic job. Moving on to question 13 and 14 now. We are doing a product rule in 13 and a quotient rule in 14 and again we are just following the same rules every single time but I suppose our numbers and everything are getting a little bit more challenging and I've tiered this worksheet in this way for a specific reason so there's quite a lot going on give yourself plenty of space make sure your writing is big enough that you can read your powers and your pluses and minuses well 
It's very important as well to point out that it's perfectly fine for you to work out every single line and to multiply out slowly. There's a lot of, you know, chat and pressure online that you need to be able to multiply out loads of brackets in one step or two steps. That is not the case at all. As a state examiner, the person who will be correcting your paper one this year, I know that it is perfectly fine if you take 10 lines to multiply something out or if it takes you three lines to multiply it out. We don't really care. It doesn't impact how we view your work. We read absolutely everything and we give you the marks that you deserve based on the information and the work you've put down. So it doesn't actually matter. So don't feel pressurized that you have to do something extra fast and use a shortcut because somebody else is doing it. That is absolutely not the case. It's very important to be content and confident in your work and what that means for everybody can be different. In questions 15, 16 and 17 and 18, we are dealing with the chain rule. I do not use the chain rule method in your log tables on page 25. I use something called the lunchbox method. I will be doing a dedicated YouTube video on this very, very soon. What essentially I do is I differentiate all the different pieces of this. So I see here in question 15, I have an X plus one, but I also have something cubed. So what I do is I differentiate the something cubed first. So three bracket X plus one to the power of two. And then I differentiate what's in the bracket, which would be one. And I multiply that in. And I follow this rule for both question 16, question 17. And when I tidy up question 18, I will do that there as well. So down in question 18 there, the bottom of that line is the square root of x squared plus 4. So what I do is I write that to the power of a half and then I bring it up on the line, which means it's to the power of minus a half. And then I go ahead and I use my chain rule on that. Again, be careful. You've got fractions in your powers there, which can make it a little bit more tricky. But again, take your time step by step and you'll be fine. It's time to move on to logs and exponentials when we're differentiating. So in question 19, we see that we just have a rule in our log tables to deal with question 19. So it's quite straightforward. In question 20, 21 and 22, we see that we have to use other rules within that. So if you look at your log tables, the log of x is the only thing that I can differentiate using the rules in the log tables. However, in question 20, we have a log of 2x, which means to use the chain rule. So we do our straightforward log. So it's log of something multiplied by the derivative of 2x. And that's where we get 1 over x. OK, and again, 21, again, is the same kind of idea with that. 22 uses the product rule. So we're very familiar with our product rule and we do our differentiate of u and v as per the rules in the log tables there. And in question 23 there, we are using trig. Again, the trig differentiation rules are in your log tables, your cos, your sine, your tan. However, if you have something like we have here, which is the x cubed plus x, that's not what's in the log table. So that's the chain rule. So I differentiate tan of something, but then I must get the derivative of the actual bracket, which is 3x squared plus 1. We are flying through these. We are nearly done. So again, question 24 and question 25 and question 26 are all chain rule as well. So you can see it's not exactly what is in my log table. So the chain rule is necessary. So we are going to implement that on all of those. Down at 27, we are also using our chain rule. So again, just a reminder, for example, question 26 there, tan of x squared minus one. My log tables only tell me how to manage tan of x. So what I do is I treat this as two pieces. I have tan of something and I have the something. So I differentiate tan of something, which is sec squared x squared minus one. And then I multiply it by the derivative of the bracket, which is two x. And again, I do the same for 27. Question 26 requires us to get rid of that third and also to tidy up the indices there as well. So our rules of indices are super important once again. We are using the chain rule here to differentiate this and tidy it up. The last two questions, 29 and 30, are for you to work out. And I will be telling you if your answer is correct or not via email or hit me up on Instagram or TikTok. 
Make sure you subscribe and share this one with your friends. See you soon.